Now let's talk about the three main examples of parasites. Ectoparasites, endoparasites and helminth worms. This is a tick. A tick is an example of an ectoparasite. An ectoparasite likes to live on the surface of its host, like the skin. Other examples of ectoparasites are fleas, lice and mites. So number one is ectoparasite. Number two is endoparasite. And just like its name sounds, it likes to live inside of the blood and tissue of its host. There are five neat tricks that you can use to guess if something is an endoparasite. Number one, of course, is if it lives inside of its host. Number two is if it's made up of one cell only and nothing else. Number three is if you can find it in soil and water. Number four is if it can infect the body through mosquitoes or flies. And number five is if it can form or make cysts. Okay, let's talk about the life cycle of an endoparasite. When a baby endoparasite cell reaches the mosquito's gut, it joins together with other cells that look just like it until it becomes something called a zygote. As more and more cells join together, this zygote then transforms into something called an oocyst. As this oocyst grows, it finally bursts and lets the grown-up version of the parasite spill out into the mosquito's saliva. When the mosquito bites a host, this parasite can then go into the host's blood. That's where the endoparasite loves to live. So first we had ectoparasites and then we had endoparasites. But do you remember what the third one was? It's helminths. Helminths is just another word for parasites that are worms. Helminths like to live in the gut, blood and other tissues of the host. Three examples of helminths are flatworms, roundworms and pinworms. The life cycle of helminths or parasites that are worms actually starts in poo. That's where they lay their eggs. Sometimes this poo then ends up in soil and then it makes its way back into the host's gut where it lays more eggs which are then excreted back out as poo and the cycle continues. <laughs>